Hello, my name is Frances Fox. I'm a trained remote viewer and all my psychic skills have been honed, trained, hammered into me. Um, I'm not sure. Today's the 10th of April, 2024. I'm not sure that many of you know this, but there's a couple of established ways to get somebody to access their innate psychic abilities because everybody has the same skills that I have. Everybody, everybody has access to superpowers, to super psychic abilities, to telepathy, clairvoyance, etc. But there are certain things that will make it develop. One of them is an electrical accident, which apparently whew, opens up your mind, goes even further, deeper into other dimensions, and you become very psychic. The other thing, which was what was used in the military program I was in, was trauma, especially sexual trauma. So just know that. When you hear of people that are incredibly psychic above and beyond the normal, chances are they were either abused or they had an electrical accident. Not that many people have electrical accidents, but a lot of people were abused. Not necessarily sexual. Abuse, abuse apparently makes you go deeper into your mind, being that you can't get your physical body out of harm's way. So you just go deep inside your head and there's where your psychic skills are. We don't do that on this channel. We're not trying to traumatize you. We're trying to have you develop your psychic skills in a way that's much more graceful and much more elegant and that you are totally in control of. So I'm gonna be changing the nature of these get togethers because we're converting these into podcasts. And when we get together for 20 minutes to do a mantra, it doesn't work in a podcast. So I'm gonna do the news from other dimensions in the beginning, and then we can go at the end and we can do the 20 minutes of whatever mantra we feel is the most important at this time. And in that way, it'll make more sense as a podcast. With a podcast, we can reach a lot more people. So what is it that's going on today that I want to tell you about? Well, I want to tell you that um, the Schumann resonance and what I am sketching of you is matching. Remember I told you that before I only needed to use red and black pens. That was it. Rarely did I have to use a color. And now everything is colorful. That's because the Schumann resonance has augmented. And we have a lot of really good energies coming in. What's the problem? The problem is that it's a big shift of consciousness. And most people don't have the education, the awareness of what it is that's going on. And most people do not discuss what's going on inside their heads. And this is very definitely an other dimensional happening, the ascension process and what the Schumann resonance is measuring. So I will be looking, and if you know of someone, I will be looking for someone who follows the Schumann resonance, understands it, and who would like to work together with me, and I can provide sketches, they can provide the Schumann resonance with the explanation, I'll provide the sketches. But let's go ahead and look at what is today having to do with the Schumann resonance, and how it relates to what I've been sketching for all of you. This is supposedly the people in the field of Schumann resonance has never seen that. Those black lines have to do with like a timeout, out of time, timeline changes. I, I don't really like the word timeline jumping and all the rest of that. It feels very non-grounded, but I have to say that when I sketch this in all of you, where the ground is here and you are up here, that is, I believe, what these black lines are showing. Time doesn't exist in the other dimensions. It is a factor in the physical dimension. That's when they say that's why when they say it'll take 17 years to reach this planet. Well, once you leave this planet, it's there's no years. So it might take 
five minutes in the measurement of this planet and not really the 17 years that they're estimating, you have to know what is ruling these other dimensions and the laws that apply here but don't apply not here because if not, you're making decisions based on things that are not accurate, which is very difficult. I had the hiccups, sorry. So when I'm drawing this and you're up here, you're not connected to the physical dimension and those black lines can explain it. Also, and this was yesterday, I drew, this is your physical body, the black, and then I drew this green body, which is your spirit body. It was always said that at this time, the veils between dimensions are going to lift. They're going to disappear. We're going to be able to see spirits. This is your spirit that is, can we say it's becoming stronger? I don't really know. But it's definitely going to be more problematic because... People are not used to seeing spirits. They're not used to seeing their own spirit that could be sitting across the room because your spirit separates from your physical body. It does that for the last time when you die. You know where a lot of people say, no, I could see a spirit leaving his physical body at the funeral or hanging around the physical body. That's what they're talking about. But it's not attached permanently. It At night, you astral travel. That's your spirit body. Your spirit moving around and doing things that it wants to do. So we've been sketching this a lot lately. A lot, not really a lot. We've been sketching it, never sketched it before. This is a type of protection. It's also an individualization of your reality. So if somebody here next door's house is on fire and all the houses around you are on fire, if you have achieved this centeredness within yourself, it's not going to affect you. The person who has the website that this, and I'm so sorry that I did not, it's on my other computer, that I don't have it here to give it to you. I think it's called the Schumann Resonance by Christine or something like that. Um, she has a very good explanation for what the Schumann Resonance is about. But these are the types of things that I've never sketched before. This was on the 5th. We're leaving. What are we leaving? The physical dimension. We're leaving. And then here, lifted from the horrors. So the expression, la loca no está tan loca. The crazy lady is not so crazy. Nope, I'm not so crazy. So news from other dimensions. Watch Venezuela. This is Venezuela. What are all those X's? Black magic. I have been noticing Venezuelans very weird. And there has been a clip that has been going around the internet of this Venezuelan guy very making fun of the United States and teaching people how to become squatters and, and get a home and saying that it's legal to do it this way. And I think he also had a child. He said, because if you have a child, that's it. You're, you're done in the United States. They take care of you forever. Very unattractive. I mean, you just want to slap him, but also very un-Venezuelan. They, they don't, every country has its personality and not everybody in the country has that personality, but it's like a, like, like an energy that is part of the culture and just didn't feel like Venezuela this man and i don't think it is i think that he has also been affected by this the last time i saw i did not see this i, I am seeing this with people individually who use our service of us checking their auras and i've seen this and it's always been somebody or a group trying to control them we actually saw it this weekend uh in one of our group that's trying to be controlled by another group. Um, so I think we should pay attention to Venezuela. That's a big piece of black magic that has to have cost a pretty penny to do. And I think that just like the last time I was able to see that Venezuela was under the influence of black magic 
um, the people, the Venezuelan people, are different. Something is done in terms of black magic of the United States, which I have not seen. The people would all suffer from it, even if they're in another country. So I also did Mexico. The only problem with this with Mexico, this is kind of clean. This is today, this afternoon. The only problem with this is that I sketched this in the center of the United States, I think in the morning, and by the evening, exactly the center of that spiral, uh, there was a break in the other dimensions enough. It happened here during the chat for me to have a panic attack. And I believe there were physical issues having to do with excess fire and not being able to, the kids not being able to go to school and potentially earthquakes. Mexico always has, has earthquakes. What is this? This is a, a, a spiraling of emotions. When, for the last several years, I've sketched this in too many people in their solar plexus, which is called the garbage can of emotions. And it has to do with somebody recycling and recycling and recycling thoughts to where they create a vortex and eventually a portal. And that's a problem. So Mexico needs to learn to do mantras um, because they're going to position them. They are positioning themselves poorly with this recycling of this misery that they are going through. So I'm going to go ahead and do the collective sketch of all of us, you here today, and let's see what comes out. Um, I was in bed most of the day yesterday, and yesterday was when those blackouts were on the Schumann Resonance. And the person mentioned they felt it had to do with the root chakra, and the root chakra has to do with fears and danger and all the rest of that. And yesterday I was processing something that had to do with a lot of fears and danger. So there's a connection between what I'm sketching and the vibration of planet Earth. And this is not going to stop. We are interconnected, not just with each other, but with this planet. So let me sketch this now and we can see where it is that we are at and maybe where we're going. We have a lot of anger being held in our mouth and that later on settles into the lower back, but not all the way down at the waist, which is the sacral sexual chakra, throat chakra and this chakra here work together. So if you mm, hold back your rage, you're going to break down here. So, oh, wow. What I'm seeing now is really good. I am seeing. Nice, nice. This is the heart chakra and that's the color of the heart chakra. But usually I'm not able to draw that because I usually don't see this. Now, there's two ways you can leave planet Earth spiritually. The white channel, the white channel of light. Oh, I see the, what is it they call it? Yeah, the tunnel of light, that white tunnel that people see when they're going to die, which I believe is the center axis that is vertical. The best way to really get away from danger is via a channel in the heart chakra. But you have to be centered there. And most, most of our consciousness is not centered there. Most of our consciousness is centered in the solar plexus, which is the garbage can of emotions. So... This time, when we leave the physical dimension, I believe where the way we're supposed to leave is via the heart chakra. This whole thing about love, love, love is always, I have always found very irritating. I guess because so much was done to the kids that were in the program I was in, me included, having to do with making sure they killed the people or pretended they did or tortured the people and the animals that we loved. That makes you completely shut down your heart chakra. So it always irritates me. But the truth of the matter is, it's it, it ends up being about love as a consequence of your consciousness centering in the heart center. From there, you have an awareness of the connection between everything.
you you go, oh my God, I wonder what happened to him or her that they were able to do that. Rather than look what they did to me, I'm taking them to court, I'm calling the police. I mean, obviously if it's appropriate to call the police, whatever, you should. But when you're heart-centered, which is the intelligence of the heart that Plato and Aristotle revered, you understand why things happen, at which time your reaction is very, very different. So the vibration I get from all of you right now is tell me more. I'm glad to hear that, even though I'm hearing it from the other dimensions. You're not saying it to me, and you're certainly not putting it in English on my darn um, chat, which would be really nice, because too many of us are thinking that the only people we're getting here are my followers, who are already going to see me 20 times over in Spanish. So if you're only an English speaker, let us know that you're enjoying this and that you do want more. So let's go ahead and get into the mantras. But I want to review again one more thing. Increasingly, I am feeling that this message that Jesus Christ left us, I'm not Christian, I'm not Catholic, but what you're looking at now is Jesus Christ with his crown of thorns around his third eye. We're talking about your ability to see. Third eye is where your wisdom is, your ability to discern. Your superpowers are held in your third eye. That's why apparently there's been such a big conspiracy to keep you away from there. The whole thing about the, the eye, the all-seeing eye on, on the dollar bill is actually a really, really good thing because the third eye has to do with wisdom, judgment, solid judgment, because from the third eye you can see everything. So you know, you're not just reacting against something. So to put it on the dollar bill is really saying that we want to have that ability to see everything associated with our finances, with our money. And that is a really good thing, which is why I keep saying, just because you don't understand the symbol and just because some bad people use it, doesn't mean it's bad. Everything can be used for good or bad. It has to do with intention, but you need to know what the symbol means. The Star of David, um, when you see me doing this, is because there's some kind of energetic danger. So, and the higher up I put it, the more the danger. I'm just joking. I just start to fiddle with this because I can feel. So you should study the symbols, but you, you, you don't study them from, from the people that talk about conspiracy and the modern books that are being written. Do not study those because they're going to angle it for you. And they're angling it from a place of lack of information. Some of them because they don't want you to understand the power of symbols. Symbols are like a type of radionics. What's a radionics? A radionics is like a sketch, but it has power. And anything can be turned into a radionics machine. So if you want to do a little experiment, you get a piece of paper and you have somebody sit. You're here with your little piece of paper. They can't see what you're sketching. And go ahead, don't tell them what you're doing. Just tell them, just sit there and just do whatever you feel like doing. But just sit there. Don't get up or go away or whatever. And then sketch a happy face. And you will notice that almost always they will start to grin. From your sketch that you are doing, that they don't even know what you're doing. That's radionics. The ability to influence with form. I'm not exactly sure how to define it, but I'm going to figure it out because this is really important. And if they just sit there and you tell them, oh, wait, wait a second. And then you sketch it with a frown. All of a sudden they're not smiling anymore. You needed to know that information, how easily we can be influenced and not even know it, not know before, not know during and not know after. So these symbols do something to us. But if you go to the original interpretations, they're not doing anything negative. The swastika 
And I never remember which way it swings in when the Nazis used it. But the swastika is pictured moving in two different directions because the swastika has to do with your energy center at the top of your head and your energy center at the bottom of your torso. Top of your head, it's got to move clockwise for it to be healthy. And the bottom, it has to move counterclockwise. So if you switch them, you can have really confused people or people that are not grounded. So what were the Nazis doing with it? I actually never went in to see which way it moves, but obviously they felt it was really important to get something in the human mind to move in a particular direction. And all those symbols work on the mind, which eventually we will get all those spirits and bad energies and people out of my way so I can get that book on the mind finished. So let's go ahead and start with the first mantra, which may be the only mantra. <laughs> And I think we still need to work on the United States. It's very scary what's happening in the United States. It's scary what's happening in the whole planet, but I'm concentrating here because whatever happens here is going to affect the entire world. Okay. Because we are the center of finance. So here is, okay. Here we go. To miraculously reduce the fire. Now, I'm going to put up the video that's for reducing fire. It's on our YouTube channel. It's free. It's eight or ten hours long. And if you have people that are argumentative or really unhappy, they have too much fire. And if you put it in your workplace or in your home, it influences people's personalities so much that you'll be like, I, I, this is like a little bit impossible to believe. This is like magic. Yeah. You know what magic is in terms of that? Giving somebody what they need. This is an adjustment of the elements, which according to shamanism, Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, health, whether it's mental health, physical health, emotional health, whatever, is a balance of the elements and we have too much fire. Okay. That's the mantra. The mantra is repeated in silence. You expel the breath through your mouth. Hopefully your two feet are on the ground. And you can look at the video as you're doing it. And the video has images of glaciers and cascading cold water. I would like for all of you, the entire time you're doing this, and it's going to be 20 minutes, this mantra, I would like for you to visualize as if you had this particular psychic skill that's known in Buddhism and in Hinduism, which is you're going to make the United States very tiny. You're going to stick it inside an igloo of ice, and you're going to put that igloo of ice underneath the cascading water, cold water. And we're going to cool down the United States. For those of you that want to focus on New York, the Northeast or the, the East Coast, Please feel free to do that because that has been burning up forever and we've not really been able to get any type of reduction in the fire there. You might want to focus on what I sketched yesterday. See if I can quickly find the map, which is Colorado and the surrounding states that they had a break in the Hicks field, which could end up with earthquakes and it could end up triggering that volcano that everybody is so afraid of. So let's go ahead and start. And you need to know that all of this that we're teaching you is magic. But the magic you're not aware of is that as you do this for the United States, you are also doing it for yourself and your surroundings. It's automatic. And I think that is why when you do this mantra from the first time we did it, not we, Oh dear, this is a very nice map. I guess this was, oh, we did this last night in the group and we ended up getting this green line, which is a protection. We end up getting a pyramid in Colorado and we ended up getting a healing here. I'm doing too much. Um, 
I'm not making mistakes, but I'm definitely not being sequential. But the Schumann resonance is pulling us out of time. Supposedly, we may end up all dumped together, which means, what does that mean? That people that died 40 years ago, you're going to be able to see them and relate to them. That people that died 300 years ago, you're going to be able to see them and relate to them. That you are going to be able to do what we do in the Mantrista movement, which I hope you'll join. You may be able to get some very interesting allies in the other dimensions where we all need protection and help. And you may end up having a relationship with Osiris, with Anubis. And you know what? If this is the point at which you go, oh, no, this lady, she, she just lost me. Okay, bye. There's a reason why they made you study mythology. And it's not the lame excuse they gave you. There's a reason why the civilizations that did more than we did, such as build pyramids, have contact with ETs. The reason why they did it is because they weren't limited to just wisdom or people that have a physical body alive at that particular time. Why can't you relate to them if in the other dimension there is no time? If all of this is very difficult to actually accept, don't accept it. You just heard it. Just allow it. Just allow it. You're going to be thrown into that mix soon enough. And this, this information, you may, may be able to say, oh, that's what she's talking about. Okay. It's like marijuana. The only side effect of marijuana is paranoia. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Marijuana lives fails. You can see what was always there, but now you can see it and you get paranoid, but you don't get paranoid. You're reacting to something that you have no awareness of and no training in. You're seeing spirits. And meanwhile, even though your church told you spirits exist, hmm, they didn't make it operational, which is why I probably chose to be born into the secret program I was born in because there everything that had to do with psychic stuff and human potential had to be operational. You needed to be able to use it. It needed to be useful. Not like the new age movement, too much of it in this country where it's all about love. Meanwhile, the person never took care of the resentment against their father. They adore their father, but they still have all that resentment there. No, 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 no. The stuff has to be operational. You have to be able to use it. It needs to be good for something that's going to push you forward, your agenda forward. It's not just a question of being. No, I'm not a Buddhist at all. So let's go ahead and start. You breathe out through your mouth. You do not mouth the words through your mouth. Okay. You just breathe. I'm just laughing about the fact that I said it's not just existing I'm sure that I probably said something that's wrong, but I'm laughing about it because truthfully, it's very difficult for us to just sit there and watch everything happen. It's probably the ideal, but we're not there yet. Okay. Okay. Let's start 20 minutes.
Okay, 20 minutes. So we have finished. Let me just review because a lot of other people showed up. This is the map I just did today of Mexico. The center of this is Aguascalientes, which I understand is a very spiritual part of Mexico. It's going counterclockwise and it's a lot of emotion. And all of that emotion, if it's not expressed, and it's not expressed, if not, it would not be here, breaks the Higgs field and then bad things can happen. So Mexico needs to do a mantra. The mantra that I would do because Mexico is also full of fire is even though we hate, our heart is broken and we want to die. I love and accept myself. And that takes care of several issues that we human beings are dealing with today. And then I did Venezuela, which for days I wanted to do. And Venezuela is totally surrounded by black magic. So I suspect something is going on there pretty big and that somebody spent a pretty large amount of dollars getting that done. So when a country has been cursed, because that's what it is, the, everybody associated with the country, even if they live in another country, they are affected by the curse. When it is removed, the people in the country, plus all of the people from that country, Originally, even if they only were born there during an airport stop because their mother was on the way someplace else, their lives are affected. It goes down when the country gets cursed and then it gets released again when the curse is removed. Um, you need to know a lot more about magic, the light side, the white magic, which is basically what I teach, and also the dark side because too many people know about black magic and use it and too many of you don't even believe in it so how could you possibly win how could you possibly explain a lot of weird stuff that goes on you can't that's a problem okay we'll be back here again tomorrow and we'll keep changing our format until we get it to where we can successfully put it into a podcast um because we worry that people in a podcast aren't going to just sit there and do 10 20 minutes of mantras without any other stimulation. So thank you for listening. I'm Francis Fox, and this is news from other dimensions.